So I know I implied that my next video would be about Lifetime cheerleader movies, and that is still happening eventually, but somewhere in the process of watching 21 Lifetime cheerleader movies, I realized that it was going to be a much larger undertaking than I expected. I also recently moved to a different country and came back to university, and it turns out that having an actual life uh, makes it harder to sit around doing nothing but watching deeply flawed media and talking about it on the internet. So that being said, I realized I wanted to do a slightly smaller scale video in the meantime. Now if you're familiar with my channel, you may know that I'm a big Bollywood fan, and although it's not the most popular thing on my channel, I have had a few commenters be like, hey, why? <laughs> why do you like this? And I think being a white Bollywood fan does kind of beg that question, because truthfully, Indian cinema is largely not very popular with, or even very accessible to, a non-Indian audience. I do think part of it has to do with a larger problem of Western people historically not being that interested in art from the Global South, at least not beyond maybe a very superficial aesthetic interest, but other parts of it arguably stem from the actual nature of Indian cinema itself. For most of its history, the Indian film industry hasn't really concerned itself with marketing films to non-Indian viewers. There are exceptions. Weirdly enough, the Soviet Union was really into Bollywood for a few decades, and in more recent years, China has been giving Bollywood a lot of business. But generally, when Indian films release internationally, which many of them do, they're usually aiming not at non-Indians, but at the Indian diaspora, non-resident Indians, NRIs. Since the 1990s, a lot of Bollywood films that have performed well overseas have succeeded due to the NRI audience. In fact, some of these films intentionally play to that audience by telling stories about non-resident Indian characters. As I was researching this topic, I came across this interview with famous Bollywood actor Saif Ali Khan, in which he said of India not catering to international audiences, the thing about our culture is that we don't really need verification, validation, appreciation from an outside culture. There are so many of us that if we just keep each other happy, then we don't financially need anything. And I thought that was a really interesting explanation, both the idea of India not needing validation from other cultures, I think perhaps the implication there is largely the West, and also the idea of it being financially unnecessary to market to other cultures. And I think both of those things are true. I've definitely seen some Indian films, especially more recent films, that seem like they're aware of non-Indian viewers potentially watching, but I've also seen a lot of Indian films that seem like they never intended any non-Indian, non-Hindi-speaking person to ever watch. But despite the relative inaccessibility of a lot of Indian films, I think they're really great, and I wish more people in the West engaged with them and took them seriously. So I thought today I could try to offer a bit of an entry point into Bollywood, especially for my fellow non-Indian people who may be interested but don't know where to start. That doesn't mean that only non-Indian people or non-Bollywood fans can watch this video, just that most of the information and the films I'm going to cover are pretty basic and well-known, but if you're interested in my opinions, uh, don't hesitate to stick around. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to mention a few YouTube channels that I like, run by actual Indian people that talk about Bollywood, so if anyone's interested in less entry-level Bollywood content, do check those out. But before we get into recommendations, let's go back to the beginning and ask ourselves, what exactly is Bollywood? The answer will shock you. What is Bollywood slash clearing up misconceptions? I'd say the two biggest misconceptions about Bollywood in the West are that A, Bollywood encompasses all of Indian cinema, and B, all Bollywood films are these big, cheesy, musical melodramas. So, people think that the term Bollywood was coined in the 60s or 70s, but apparently it's not clear exactly when or exactly by whom. It's a portmanteau of Bombay and Hollywood. Bombay is now called Mumbai. It's the city in which much of the Hindi film industry is based. Now, actually, the term Bollywood technically only refers to the Hindi language film industry based in Mumbai. Some people do use it more colloquially to refer to all of Indian cinema, but for the purposes of this video, I'm using the first definition because it's the correct one. That language distinction is especially important because there are a lot of languages spoken in India and many of them have their own entire dedicated film industries. 
In fact, after the coinage of the term Bollywood, a myriad of other Hollywood-based film industry nicknames sprung up all over the world, but especially in India alone. Kaliwood is the Tamil language film industry, Tollywood is the Telugu film industry, or the Bengali film industry, depending on who you ask. Mollywood is the Malayalam film industry. Dollywood or Gollywood is the Gujarati film industry. Bojiwood is the Bojpuri film industry. And don't forget about Ollywood, Dollywood, Chollywood, Sandalwood, Coastalwood. Many people refer to all of these Indian film industries in a very general sense with the term regional cinema. The most popular ones are probably South Indian, Tamil, and Telugu films, Marathi films, and in North India, Punjabi and Gujarati films are quite popular as well. And Bengali cinema is known for kind of being the hub of Indian art house cinema, also called parallel cinema. If you've ever heard of the Apu trilogy by Satyajit Rai, those are some of the most famous, critically acclaimed Indian films ever, and they're Bengali parallel cinema. So it's important to acknowledge that, say, a Tamil film like Mani Ratnam's Bombay is not a Bollywood film. It's an Indian film, but it's not in the Hindi language. Similarly, a film like Danny Boyle's Slumdog Millionaire, contrary to popular belief, is also not a Bollywood film. Although it's about India and features some Hindi dialogue and one A.R. Rahman song sequence, it's not an Indian film. It's a British production. The Indian film industry is the largest in the world in terms of the sheer number of films released each year, and the Hindi film industry is the largest film industry in India. It generally produces films with the highest budgets, rakes in the most money, and creates the biggest movie stars. And it's true that most mainstream Bollywood films contain song sequences. This is a stylistic convention of Indian cinema. According to K. Moti Gokul Singh and Vimal Desanayake in Indian Popular Cinema, A Narrative of Cultural Change, the distinctiveness of Indian cinema has six major influences. The Ramayana and the Mahabharata, Classical Indian Theater, Indian Folk Theater, Parsi Theater, Hollywood, and most recently, musical television, like MTV. These art forms were, and still are, particularly influential when it comes to the incorporation of music into the Indian film. Now, I'm hesitant to call Indian films musicals, because the way that Indian musical films are musicals is very different from the way that Western stage and screen musicals are musicals. In most Western musicals, at least the good ones, the songs are very much interwoven into the story and exist to move the plot along. This is not usually the case in Bollywood musicals. The songs are rarely vital to the narrative, and often the story comes to a halt for a musical number. Often, it's possible to completely divorce the songs from an Indian film, which is kind of the point. These songs are created to be played on the radio and achieve success outside of the film. Interestingly, this is comparable to early Hollywood musicals, but not so much Western musicals today. You could take Gunguru out of war, but you couldn't take Beautiful out of Heather's the Musical. I don't know, that was the first modern musical I could think of. Indian film music is its own industry and accounts for about 70% of popular Indian music. Bollywood composers and playback singers are sometimes just as famous as the actors in the films. And in case you don't know, Bollywood actors almost never do their own singing, with the exception of very occasional gimmicky stunts where actors will record a song. People called playback singers usually record the songs for the actors to lip sync to. But that being said, not every Bollywood film is like that. Even within the realm of really mainstream commercial Hindi cinema, some films only include songs diegetically or in montages, and occasionally, increasingly nowadays, some don't feature song sequences at all. This is even more common in smaller scale, independent Hindi cinema, which is often where you'll find more down-to-earth, arthouse style films. It's also worth mentioning that the musical, romantic, comedy, drama film is far from the only genre in Bollywood. In the 70s and 80s, a genre called the masala film became popular in India. Masala means a mix of spices, and these were films that mixed genres like drama, comedy, tragedy, romance, action, musical. These films were the ultimate entertainers. They were often over three hours long, and above all else, they aimed to give the audience what they paid for. 
And the Masala film has definitely informed what Bollywood is today. A lot of big Bollywood releases are still these long, popcorn entertainers that dip into several different genres. I think this type of film is what most people think of when they think of Bollywood. But what a lot of people may not realize is that there are Bollywood horror movies, sci-fi movies, action movies, social issue dramas, etc. And yeah, often even those movies will feature random dance numbers and ridiculous melodrama, but you get the point. There's variation. All this to say, I'm always a little skeptical of people who are immediately very dismissive of Bollywood. Bollywood is not a genre, it's an entire film industry. It's not like saying you don't like horror movies or something, it's like saying you don't like German movies. I think Indian cinema has a lot to offer, and now that I've given you a very general overview of the industry, I'd love to share a few of my personal favorite Hindi films with you. I've organized these films into two categories, unironically good movies, films that I feel need little to no disclaimer and are especially accessible to viewers that haven't seen any prior Indian films, and films that I would take with a few hefty grains of salt. These are films that I really love, but admittedly maybe have some dated elements or elements that are a little culturally different, anything that I feel the need to explain to people. So without further ado, let's list some films in chronological order, as usual. Unironically good movies. Salam Bombay has the distinction of being one of only three Indian films ever to be nominated at the Academy Awards. They've only been nominated in the foreign language category, and none have ever won the award. I think Salam Bombay is a very accessible film for non-Bollywood viewers for a few reasons. It's a very straightforward, gritty film without song sequences or the over-the-top stylization that you see in a lot of Hindi films. It's much more akin to what Westerners generally expect movies to be like. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's a really poignant film with performances from actual street kids, they weren't actors, so it comes across very genuine in that sense. It's a pretty gut-wrenching movie, but if you're interested in really genuinely good, serious Indian cinema, this is a great place to start. Okay, a bit of a shift here. Kabihan Kabina is a much more Bollywood y film. It stars my king, Shah Rukh Khan, and it's a coming of age story about a young trumpet player who's constantly down on his luck, largely due to his own poor character. He's lazy and often disappoints his father. He's in love with a girl who's in love with someone else, and he tries some pretty underhand methods to try and steal her away. This film was unique for having a protagonist who was kind of a flawed loser. At this point in time in mainstream Bollywood, film protagonists were usually pretty clear-cut heroes who do everything right and go to church and make their parents proud and get the girl in the end, so this film feels a lot more modern and relatable than many other Bollywood films of the 90s. It really is one of Shah Rukh Khan's best performances, and I think there are also a lot of nice messages in it about growing up, like the person you like might not always like you and you have to respect that, and doing poorly academically doesn't mean you have no skills or value. I know those aren't necessarily revolutionary ideas, but they were pretty nuanced for Bollywood at the time. It also has great songs that I still listen to all the time. Lagan is an absolute classic. It's another one of the three Indian films ever to make it to the Oscars, and compared to the other two, Mother India and Salam Bombay, I kind of love that Lagan was nominated while being so Bollywood. The film is really well executed, but it's also full of song and dance numbers, the drama runs high, it's very patriotic, it's about cricket, and it's almost four hours long. It's set in colonial India in a small village that's been impoverished by the taxes they're forced to pay to the British, made even worse by a prolonged drought. 
The angry young man of the village, Bhuvan, insults some British officers about their cricket game, and the officers challenge the village to a cricket match, saying that if the village wins, they don't have to pay taxes for three years, but if the British win, they'll triple the taxation. So it becomes this incredible, like, sports western intercut with this interracial love triangle and beautifully composed, beautifully staged songs by A.R. Rahman, one of the best living Indian film composers. The only part I don't like is when they have the white lady sing in English, because they didn't dub her with a white or English singer, they dubbed her with an Indian playback singer doing a British accent, and you can kind of tell. My heart it speaks a thousand words, I feel eternal bliss. But all in all, great movie, maybe watch it over a few days unless you have four hours to kill on an Indian cricket movie. Hi Amit. एक तो अच्छा दिखता नहीं, दो तू गरीब है, तीन तू ऐसे गाएगा, तू कौन सी लड़की तेरे को पसंद करेगी जय? कोई न कोई गरीब बदसूरत लड़की मिल ही जाएगी ना, जो मुझसे भी बुरा गाती हो. Sad. We're moving perhaps even further into typical commercial Bollywood territory, but I think this is a really special film. Jane Tu Ya Jane Na is a coming-of-age romantic comedy drama about two best friends, Jay and Aditi, who spend all their time together, have a really close bond, who everyone thinks are in love, but they're adamant that they're not. But of course, as their adult lives begin and they start to drift apart and seek romantic partners, they realize that they are meant to be together. Like Kavi Ha Kavi Na, this film is so unique among its contemporaries in its nuance, its relatability, its emotional depth. This feels like a film made by someone who is really passionate and compassionate about this particular time in life. The film was written and directed by Abbas Tayavala, who's mainly a screenwriter in Bollywood. He's only directed one or two films, but I think he's a real talent in the industry. He's worked on a lot of good stuff. And you can tell that it's a film by a writer, because the screenplay, I think, has a lot of qualities and quirks and details that you don't often see in mainstream Bollywood films. The protagonist's mother is an anti-police brutality activist who has frequent conversations with a painting of her dead ex-husband. There are these two rootin' tootin' Mumbai cowboy brothers causing chaos here and there throughout the film, and of course they come back triumphantly to play a role in the film's climax. It's such a gem of a film, it's so enjoyable. And it also features an incredible A.R. Rahman soundtrack, one of my favorites. वैसे वो खाना मैंने अपने हस्बैंड के लिए बनाकर भेजा था और जब डब्बा वापस आया तो ऐसा लगा कि घर आकर आज वो मुझसे कुछ कहेंगे कुछ घंटों के लिए सोचने लगी कि दिल का रास्ता वाकई पेट से होकर जाता है उन घंटों के बदले आज भेज रही हूं पनीर मेरे हस्बैंड का फेवरेट मूविंग बैक इनटू आर्टसी हिंदी सिनेमा वी हैव द लंच बॉक्स आई थिंक दिस फिल्म वुड बी अ गुड बॉलीवुड मूवी फॉर पीपल हु थिंक दे डोंट लाइक बॉलीवुड मूवीज because like I said about Salam Bombay, this film doesn't have song sequences, it's very grounded in reality, it's sad, it's beautiful, it's serious, it looks good. It probably should have been India's submission to the Oscars in 2013, it probably would have had a better shot than this Gujarati film they submitted that year. But I haven't seen The Good Road. Maybe it's the best Indian movie of all time. Anyways, the plot of the lunchbox hinges on the lunchbox delivery system in Mumbai. Basically, these workers called Dabavalas run this intricate service that delivers lunches from people's homes or restaurants and then take back the empty lunchboxes at the end of the day. In the film, a woman in an unhappy marriage tries to win back her husband by making really nice lunches, but there's an error in the delivery system that results in her lunches being delivered to a widower played by the late great Irfan Khan. They start to exchange letters through the lunchbox and this romance blossoms. There's not much I want to say, I think it's best to just watch it. Like I said, this one is probably good for people who aren't really into the over-the-top style of mainstream Bollywood. The writer-director, Ritesh Batra, is really good, and he's even crossed over and made a couple films in the West, so far mainly about um, old people romance, I think. Good for him. I consider this one to be in a similar category as the last. 
it's kind of neo-realist, and something I like about it is that it tackles poverty in India in perhaps a more modern, nuanced way than your average Indian slum movie. It deals a little more with the intersection between poverty and things like caste, sexism, police corruption. It tells two concurrent stories, one of a young woman who is caught having premarital sex and blackmailed by the police, and one of a young man from a lower caste who falls in love with a wealthy girl. Notably, Masan is the debut of the actor Vicky Kaushal, one of my faves. Vicky is a great actor, he's so likable. I think he's especially good at crying in his movies. <laughs> I will really see anything for Vicky Kaushal. I saw a pretty bad Hindi horror movie called Boot Part One just because it starred Vicky Kaushal. Anyways, this is still his best film, and again, I'm sure it would work well for people interested in Indian cinema, but not so much the ridiculous Bollywood conventions. Check it out. A few grains of salt movies. Now let's move on to the films that I love, but I do not show to anyone without at least a few disclaimers. <laughs> DDLJ is about two non-resident Indians, Raj and Simran. Simran is a very obedient girl. She always aims to please her parents, especially her father, but she convinces them to let her go on a trip to Europe with her friends before she has to enter into an arranged marriage in Punjab. On that trip, she meets and falls in love with Raj, a lazy, privileged London boy. So of course Raj has to follow her to Punjab and rescue her from her arranged marriage. All right, this is the ultimate Bollywood movie. DDLJ pretty much invented the 90s and 2000s Bollywood landscape. It was the blueprint. This movie was so popular and stayed popular for so long that it has been running at this one theater in Mumbai continuously for 26 years. They never stopped showing it. But the reason this film is on my grain of salt list is mainly because it's much more of a cheesy, melodramatic Bollywood movie, and there are a couple of things in it that haven't aged so well. It was very common in Bollywood in those days, and to an extent it still is, to have these love stories that are like boy meets girl, boy harasses girl to an ungodly degree no matter how much she asks him to stop, girl finally gives up and lets him marry her. But like I said, DDLJ is ridiculously iconic. If you really want an authentic Bollywood education, this is probably a good place to start. And the overall impression is very romantic. It was one of the first films to feature the iconic romantic duo of Shah Rukh Khan and Kajal. They've done several films together, they have so much chemistry. There are a lot of great memorable moments and lines, and again, a great soundtrack. This one has some similarities to the last one. It's another iconic Bollywood film of the 90s. It stars the same two actors and has songs by the same composers. In Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, a little girl, Anjali, who's being raised by her single father, Rahul, reads a letter left to her by her late mother, Tina, detailing her time in college when she met Rahul and formed a love triangle with him and his best friend, also named Anjali. The letter, written by Tina when she knew she was dying, urges little Anjali to go find big Anjali so that she can set her up with her dad. So about half of the movie is a flashback to the college years, and the latter half is Rahul and Anjali reconnecting thanks to Anjali. Notably, this was the first film directed by Karan Johar, who actually had a small acting role in DDLJ. This movie started it all, because today, this guy, Karan Johar, is a very powerful actor in Bollywood. I mean actor as in, like, one doing actions, not like an actor in movies, but I can see how that might have been confusing. I actually think he is a good writer and director. I think sometimes, especially in his more recent work, he can be a little ostentatious, a little overconfident maybe, but when he focuses on the story and the characters, I think he can create some really effective cinema. Kuch Kuch Hotahe is definitely my favorite film of his. I think it's the most consistent, the most well-paced, it is genuinely so emotionally effective at times, especially in regards to Anjali's unrequited love and in the third act as things ramp up. No music. It's 
It's definitely extremely goofy. Johar's films are really over the top and stylized, but that's one of the things I love about them. Hey, watch where you're going, young man. Would you look at that? It's Karan Johar's second directorial venture that stars the same actors as the last two and features the same composers. K3G is an intergenerational family epic about the Raichans, a very wealthy Indian family whose eldest son falls in love with and marries a poor girl, leading his father to disown him. Several years later, the younger son, now an adult, goes to London to find his brother and try to make amends with him and, of course, falls in love with the younger sister of his brother's wife. The main reason I would take this one with a few grains of salt is that, in my opinion, it's the first instance of that Karan Johar overconfidence I was talking about. This film is three and a half hours long, it's quite tonally inconsistent, the pacing's pretty bad in some places, and although some overacting is par for the course in Bollywood, there are some really ridiculous line deliveries in K3G. Rahul. Yeah. Take a chill pill! <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I love it. It's so funny. There are lines from this movie that I still quote all the time, mostly from Karina Kapoor's character, Pooja. I'm gonna be fat. Fat? P-H-A-T. Pretty hot and tempting. Made us out from Johnny Kelly, you all have three departments made brilliant to watch I hear. And that is... Good looks. Good looks. And... Good looks. What are we waiting for? Christmas? But I realize that this could be alienating for some viewers if they're not familiar with Bollywood or aren't into that sort of style, so you know, salt. Namak. And wouldn't you know it, this film has a great soundtrack. Mere dil mein aaj kya hai? Hear me out. If you're a Bollywood fan watching this video, hear me out. Mujse Dosti Kuroge gets a bad rap, okay? People act like this is a bad movie, and it's really not. Compared to the other popular Bollywood films of the time, I would say it's about as good as the good ones. Mujse Dosti Kuroge follows three childhood friends. Raj, Pooja, and Tina, which is confusing because those are all character names from movies we've already talked about, and they're all played by actors from movies we've already talked about. Anyways, as kids, Raj loves Tina, but Pooja loves Raj, and Tina doesn't really care about Raj, so when Raj moves to England, he asks Tina to email him, but she doesn't care, so Pooja writes him pretending to be Tina, so when they reunite as adults, Raj thinks he's in love with Tina, but really for all these years he's been talking to Pooja, but then Tina starts to fall in love with Raj, and they get engaged, but eventually Raj finds out that it was Pooja writing the letters, so Raj and Pooja fall in love, but they don't want to hurt Tina, so they keep it from Tina, which is very sad for Pooja. Have you got all that? I think the romantic premise is pretty effective. I like romances like these that have some sort of variation on the Serrano de Bergerac story, people writing to people with unknown identities. I think it has a lot of romantic potential. And Hrtik Roshan and Rani Mukherjee have a surprising amount of chemistry. I wish they'd done more films together. Like the last couple films, Mujse Dosti Kuroge is very over the top, very melodramatic, but I think that adds to the charm. And again, a great soundtrack. In fact, late in the film, there's an extremely long song that is a medley of other popular Bollywood songs. And I think it's really cool and uses the songs well to illustrate the dynamics and emotions between the characters. I love when Indian films do that with the song sequences. I'm too good. This is the one, people. This is my Bollywood origin story. So I had a film studies class in high school, at the end of which my teacher had kind of run out of things to show us, so he took a recommendation from one of the school's math TAs, who, weirdly enough, was also a white guy. I'd love to hear his Bollywood origin story. And anyways, the film he suggested was Kalhona Ho. Watching this movie 
changed my life forever. It took me on a journey. If you haven't seen Kalhonaho, then you haven't known the triumphs and defeats, the epic highs and lows of Bollywood. This film is about Nena, who lives a pretty miserable life in Toronto, sorry, I mean New York City, with her two much younger siblings, widowed mother and goofy best friend Rohit. But her life changes forever when she meets Aman, a stranger who breaks into spontaneous musical numbers and seems to improve the lives of everyone he meets. The plot thickens when Rohit falls in love with Nena, but Nena falls in love with Aman, and Aman is harboring a terrible secret, and oh my god, just watch it right now! I know I've said that all of these movies have great soundtracks, but this one really does have my favorite Bollywood soundtrack of all time. This is in the salt category because when I've rewatched it in more recent years, I've realized that there are some weird, dated things. I always forget that there are some moments that are really racist towards Chinese people, so watch out for that. And the movie keeps making jokes about Nena's friend's weight, so that sucks. And it still has that DDLJ-style romance where at first it's very much just a man harassing a woman who wants nothing to do with him. But it's so worth it. This is the Bollywood movie to end all Bollywood movies. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll fall in love. The story of a lifetime, dot dot dot, in a heartbeat. Get in. अगर किसी चीज को दिल से चाहो तो पूरी कायनात उसे तुमसे मिलाने की कोशिश में लग जाती है आप सब ने मुझे मेरी चाहत से मिला दिया थैंक्स थैंक्स वेरी मच आई फील लाइक द किंग ऑफ द वर्ल्ड Om Shanti Om is perhaps better consumed after having watched a few Bollywood films because it's basically a love letter to classic Bollywood It's this crazy fantasy story about a Bollywood extra in the 70s who falls in love with a famous actress and dies with her while trying to save her from a fire set by her evil lover who wants her out of the picture. Our hero is reincarnated as a famous Bollywood actor in the 2000s, and upon learning about his past, he sets out to get revenge on the evil guy with the help of a woman who just happens to look exactly like the famous actress who died. This is a classic. Everybody loves Om Shanti Om. It's ridiculous and over the top, but since it's lampooning a lot of common Bollywood tropes and conventions, it's a lot more self-aware than most of these movies. Even though this isn't technically my favorite film on this list, honestly, if you only end up watching one film I recommend, I want it to be War. War is an action film that I think I saw four times in theaters. It's a spy thriller about Khalid, a young raw agent. Raw stands for Research and Analysis Wing. It's a real agency. I think it's kind of like the Indian CIA. Khalid is the son of a famous raw trader, so he's very eager to prove himself and prove that he's not like his father. He ends up working for Kabir, his father's old partner, who distrusts him immediately, but they eventually bond and become close friends. But oh no, Kabir has gone rogue. Can Khalid figure out what's going on? This movie is so funny and entertaining. It's definitely a little derivative of the Mission Impossible series in terms of its style and some of its action sequences, but I really don't think that takes away from the experience. And furthermore, can Tom Cruise say he's ever brought one of his action movies to a halt to perform an impeccably choreographed dance number? Yeah, I thought not. This film stars two of my favorite Bollywood actors, Hrithik Roshan and Tiger Shroff, who I've mentioned on this channel before. Tiger Shroff is maybe the worst actor in Bollywood. To his credit, he's a very skilled dancer and martial artist, but he definitely only has an acting career because his parents are both very famous and influential in the film industry. But he's like a so bad it's good actor. I cannot take my eyes off him when he's on screen. Tiger Shroff. Mon amour. He's so bad at acting, and I love it, but to be fair, he definitely gives his best performance in this film, and he really is skilled when it comes to dancing and stunts, so I'll give him that. I just find it endlessly entertaining to watch the little quirks of his acting performances. And guys, I have to say it, of all the films on this list, this one is definitely the most unintentionally homoerotic. It's not just me, okay? This is like one of the main things that people took away from this movie. 
You Can't Tell Me War Isn't a Romance. This film is incredibly fun. I think some of the action sequences are actually pretty cool. There are only two songs in this movie, but they're both really well done with really cool choreography and staging. It's like they managed to distill all of the most cliched but entertaining elements of the action genre and put them together into one perfect movie. Please watch War, I'm begging you. And also write some fan fiction about the main characters so that I can read it. And there we have it, my Bollywood recommendations. Nobody asked, but I delivered anyway. Bear in mind, these are somewhat surface level recommendations. Like I've said, these are films that I think would be good for newcomers to Indian cinema, but there are so many other good Indian movies I didn't get to, more obscure ones. There are lots of good non-Hindi Indian movies that I didn't mention. Honestly, I haven't seen nearly as much Indian regional cinema as Bollywood cinema. That's still kind of a blind spot for me, so I would encourage you, if you're interested, to seek out those types of films as well. Speaking of which, I mentioned that I wanted to shout out some more dedicated Bollywood channels that I like. Here they are. A few years ago, I started watching a channel called Tried and Refused Productions because at the time I really liked Watch Mojo listicle type content and was just getting into Bollywood. And TRP does that type of list video, but often with a little more of a personal touch than something like Watch Mojo. Today, his content is pretty varied. He does straight up reviews as well as analysis, interviews with Bollywood celebrities. Sometimes they'll talk about Bollywood music or goofy Indian TV. So TRP is a good channel to cover all of your Bollywood review bases. One of my favorite sets of Bollywood YouTube videos I've ever found is Pretentious Movie Reviews. This was a series done by comedians Kanan Gill and Biswa Kalyan Rath. On Pretentious Movie Reviews, they would do very funny reviews of really terrible Bollywood movies or occasionally just popular Bollywood movies like DDLJ. Sadly, they stopped doing these a few years ago. I think they've both moved on to bigger and better things, but these videos are definitely worth a watch. There are jokes from these videos that I still think about all the time. This week's movie is... Which calls for a slight change in costume. And more recently, I came across a smaller channel called Cherry Bepsi. She does media criticism videos on a number of topics, actually mostly not Bollywood, but she has done a couple Bollywood videos, and I think they're really good, especially probably for people new to Bollywood. And the other videos are good too. I think we likely have very similar audiences, so if you like my videos, you'll probably like her videos. By the way, all of these channels make content at least primarily in English. Some of them might have a sentence of Hindi here and there, but should be pretty accessible for English speakers. I just think if I'm gonna be a white Bollywood fan telling you what Bollywood movies to watch, I should probably at least point you towards some actual Indian Bollywood fans who can also tell you what Bollywood movies to watch. Like I hope I've made clear, I really love Hindi cinema and I think it deserves a lot more attention from non-Indian audiences. It makes me sad that a lot of people seem to swear it off immediately just because of this cool boy aversion to cheese and outward displays of emotion, but that's probably its own video essay. I hope you enjoyed this video. I like how I said that this was going to be the small scale video to tide you over for the larger scale video, and then I wrote 12 pages of script. But such is the nature of being annoying. Do let me know if you plan to watch any of these movies. If you're already a Bollywood fan, tell me your Bollywood recommendations. Tell me your non-Hindi Indian movie recommendations. Stay tuned for that Lifetime Cheerleader video. It will happen. And subscribe to this channel. What are you waiting for? Christmas? What are we waiting for? Christmas?